Thank you. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, for some comments the uh, superintendent of our schools, uh, Matthew Clinton. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the town council for having me here tonight, and good evening and welcome. I really just I'd like to talk about the board of school district for a little bit. Uh, some of our tax dollars go towards it. Uh, I'd like to take some of the time to tell you about some of the things that are happening, some of the, some of the vision that we have moving forward, and, and certainly some of the successes that are taking place. We're bearing down on a 150-year anniversary coming up. Pretty soon, that's the original school that was over on Maple Avenue in Morristown. And I'd like to show this picture. That's the graduating class of 1897. Uh, and I do like to point out Estella Walker uh, here on the right. She was the first African-American female to graduate uh, from the Moore School District. And her brother was the first African-American male. It was a uh, school district that did not exclude African-Americans uh, in the 19th century. And uh, not that it's, it's been a perfect school district, uh, certainly, but I think we're always proud that it was not a place that it was excluding uh, different groups of people. I'd like to show this photo, too, because it's 1909 graduating class, and there's a superintendent. He was the superintendent for 50 years. Wow. Yeah, so I'd usually drop the mic uh, right around that. But I, that it won't be me, I don't think I'll make it 50, but that's really quite impressive. But I think that his vision is really something uh, that we're still trying to live up to. And that was our baseball team in 1914, and the original school, is, it's 100 years old. It was a beautiful building, uh, it still is. And, uh, you know, it, it was considered one of the most progressive buildings. Uh, in 1918, people went to Morristown High School from all over, from Madison, Morris Plains, Mendham, uh, throughout uh, the, the whole area. It was a very progressive school, both in vision of the students, vision in the way uh, the kids learned, and vision in terms of facilities. And female sports came in in the 1920s. And we just found this, this photograph about a, about a month ago. And on the back of it, it's 1935, height of the Depression. Uh, Morristown, uh, third grade students, and is right over at Lafayette Learning Center. And what's, what's neat about it, I taught history for 15 years. And what's neat about this is you see this mix of kids that you usually don't see in old photographs. And at that time, over near Lafayette Learning Center, there was a lot of African American families, a lot of Italian families lived in that section. Uh, so it's always been an area, again, of, of a lot of uh, diversity in the school district. And of course, I'm jumping ahead now. Uh, um, not quite a hundred years, but New York Times is still uh, checking us out because we're an experiment. The Moore School District is the only school district in the state of New Jersey that was created, as you know, from the merger in 1971 of forced integration. The only school district in New Jersey. So we have a unique past, and that past really guides us as to how we, we go forward, and we, we take it pretty seriously. Uh, that, that original vision. That means uh, uh, quite a bit to us. And we consider it the more school district advantage. We really do. That past and our values and what we're trying to do. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that. We've been really focusing on what we call this learning positioning system or really helping make sure, just like the global positioning system that we all have in our phones and our cars, that you know where you're going, you know where you're getting to, it tells you when to turn, that we're using our data and our systems today so that our children and our parents know exactly how to navigate the system so that they each can ascend. So we've been talking about, we use this word interoperability, again, really working all our data coming into one place, but, but also not just test scores, but kids' social and emotional grit and perseverance, their citizenship, inclusion, and after-school activities. We're tracking all of this stuff today, bring it into one spot. And this idea, really, I like to tell people, this is my job. Right here, this is my job. So we have students who say, I can't do it. And then kids who say, I can't do it, I will do it. And, and what are the conditions that lead to this, where kids can't think they can do it? That's my job. Find those things and then solve it so that all the kids end up there. 
And, and we've got a pretty uh, good laid out plan for this. We've been working on for a number of years and we're kind of in this, this latter stage. So we're excited, we're focusing a lot on health and wellness and safety of course, uh, which you started off your meeting uh, today and equity inclusion and a lot of very important issues. And Chief DeCarlo said it really well. It's a tremendous amount of hard work. The town council knows that and I'm grateful, very grateful for all the hard work that went into the class three officers, that among many, many other issues. Chief DiCarlo and I uh, and Rich Ferrone spent a lot of time on everything from the nor'easters that come through and the roads and, and a lot of issues. I'm very grateful for the partnership we have with the town council. So let's talk about some of the things happening, some of the successes uh, in our schools. I'd like to point this out. This is reading and writing, our third to fifth grade schools. And you see the state average in math, which over those three years, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade actually declines in math, but you can see in the Moore School District, uh, it goes up by 14 percentage points. Uh, and in the, in the sixth grade, look at the reading and writing, look at the difference between the state average, which is six, and the Moore School District average. And what we really like to brag about in our district, and I think this is what we're most proud of, every single subgroup of students Every single one in the Morris School District is ascending. That's third to fifth grade. Every single, and, and mostly by double digits. So whereas the state in reading and writing is only going up by six percentage points, we're seeing double digits for every single group of kids. And that's what we consider the Morris School District advantage. And that's what we're obsessing over. And, and we're pretty excited about it. Sussex Avenue School was a National Title I Distinguished School, like two in the state of New Jersey. Uh, it gets that designation only, uh, it was only one of a hundred in the entire country. And that is because of the, the growth in reading. And that's not something we apply to or anything like that. That's because of the growth, reading, writing, and math for our special education students and uh, kids from, from different subgroups. We do more than that. We're focused on outdoor spaces for kids, gardens, and healthy bodies, healthy minds. And we do a lot in all of our schools to enrich that every student feels like they belong, every student feels valued, and in our kindergarten classes in pre-K, our kids are coding. And we've got an engineering program, pre-K to 12, all the way through, we'll talk about that more in a second. Well, Freely Heisen, same thing, we're really, I know it's a lot of numbers, I wanna point out a, just a couple here. Look, if you look at the economically disadvantaged kids in the seventh grade, we're really proud of this passed at reading and writing at 63.5%. This is the state average for all students. Well, I like to say, and this is also true for our eighth grade, uh, non-bilingual, but economically disadvantaged. Our economically disadvantaged students outperform the typical student in reading and writing in the seventh grade. Not many superintendents can say that. That's a pretty, pretty unique uh, uh, success. And look at, again, all the different subgroups Sixth grade, look at the state average, improving over three years by 4.2%, but at Freeling Highs in 13%, and every single subgroup, double digits. Everybody's succeeding. Look at the seventh grade, double digits, the state average improving nearly 6%, but 26%, almost 27% at Freeling Highs in. And look, look at these numbers improvement. Everybody 20 percentage points or more. Really, really amazing work that's been happening over there. It's pretty unique. It's pretty unique. So we're, we're very excited. This is includes not just kids meeting expectations, but exceeding expectations. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, this is the number of kids exceeding expectations. So just to give you a little example, last uh, four years ago, we had 43 students entering Morristown High School exceeding expectations in reading and writing. This year, we have 143. And that's the growth in three years time. So we're really excited by this, all kids exceeding. Again, we're really focused on social capital. We have all sorts of after school clubs like uh, Model UN. We have a National Society of Black Engineers. We have a technology, I'll get to that in a second. We have these incredible after school programs for music. We almost have nearly 700 students at Freeling Heisen out of 1150 who are involved in music. 700 in choir, band, 
support orchestra, and over 25 kids earning at least an all area recognition. Just tremendous success in all after school programs as well as during the day. We have a technology student association we just created two years ago. Kids, uh, what a great shot of these kids, right? Uh, winning first place or, or in the top 10 in the state, and they went down to the national championship in Florida in June, and every single uh, Freeling Heisen student placed in the top 10 in the nation in their category. That's out of 2,000 schools nationwide. So again, tremendous uh, success that we see from the kids. We have kids first place at the Morris Teen Arts Festival. There's, a, there's this general knowledge competition. Our seventh grade and eighth grade took first place. I, I also like to thank the private schools for showing up too. That was really nice. Uh, they gave us a good competition uh, there. Very good. But again, beautiful pictures of the kids. Freely Heisen's really doing fantastic things. And at Morristown High School, we see that continuing, trying to have a great vision for our facilities like we did 100 years ago. This is our, our STEM supervisor went to uh, Northwestern. You see a picture here of NGIT. Um, I'm drawing a blank. University of Chicago, some other of these engineering programs. And he took some pictures, beautiful pictures of these state-of-the-art uh, college engineering programs uh, out there in the Midwest. Well, Morristown High School's facilities look pretty similar. Is that new wing we put in two years ago, $13 million addition. Our facilities look very, very similar. We have state-of-the-art, this vision that we have for learning design thinking. Um, this is our fabrication lab where kids are putting things together. Our wood shop, again, we have CNC machines, 3D printers. The kids are designing things on computers and then, they, and then working both by hand and the computers, uh, printing those things out as well. Tremendous stuff. Really excited about the vision. Our STEM Academy is largely considered one of the best in the state of New Jersey. It's not just a group of classes that the kids take, but we have partnerships with colleges, with companies, uh, all sorts of things uh, that are fantastic going on. Our kids are doing original research. These kids, they're investigating all sorts of things. They're taking this original research that they do over two years and they're getting into amazing colleges. Uh, just great stuff. And we're really working, make sure we have a Girls Who Code, Girls Who STEM program, a great shot for the kids who went from Freeling Heisen up to the high school. Again, we have, uh, we have this program from kindergarten straight through the high school. Uh, when it comes to STEM and engineering. So we've done a lot of great things with our facilities as well. Committed over $2 million, new parking lot, new bleachers, a great shot from last weekend's game. Our band is up over 100, our marching band up over 100 kids. We've invested close to $3 million in a refurbished, redesigned art suite for our art students. Some of the, the quick before and afters um, that we're proud of. We didn't put that chair up there on purpose, but it, you know, much, much better facilities. And, and why? Because our kids deserve the very best. It is really thriving our program. And uh, we have, again, uh, clubs like Melanin Minds where we're celebrating cultures, celebrating diversity. Our kids are, are being nominated for great and winning awards for the Paper Mill Playhouse. Uh, great after, again, uh, different uh, programs we have with the kids. And we're always winning championships in something or other. Last year, county champs in baseball, girls lacrosse, first time ever. Field hockey is off to another good start, sectional champions. And we also have this partnership with CIEE. We have kids, over 30 kids, uh, had um, summer internships all throughout the country last, I'm sorry, uh, throughout the world last year, preparing them. 82% of our students last year were admitted to what Princeton Review calls a best college. We have currently right now 29 students, so it's averaging about seven, eight students a year, 29 students right now in the, Ivy, the eight Ivy League schools, which is as good as any school in Morris County. Uh, so our kids are getting into great schools. We were awarded uh, the AP District Honor Roll last year for and dramatically increasing access to AP for underrepresented students, increased percentages by close to 30% more. We have 17 perfect scores in BC Calc 
uh, last year, close to 100 kids. This is more than Chatham, more than Mendham, more than a lot of just about every school district in Morris County. Uh, tremendous achievement uh, that we're seeing with the kids. Just quickly again, last year, the New Jersey Science League competition, number one in Morris County in environmental science, number one in chem, number two in bio, and three in physics placing in the state. Our kids are earning this now, Seal of Biliteracy, new program in the state. Our band was named one of the one of the top six bands in the state of New Jersey last year, playing at Rutgers. Uh, they just uh, topped top three uh, this weekend, last weekend, at an Edison uh, Festival. Best in show, Warstown High School, last year, Teen Arts Festival. Uh, best Film in New Jersey, Morristown High School, two years in a row. Best comedy, Morristown High School, two years in a row. I'm not sure. Uh, it means our kids have good personality. So we, we, we were admitted to this League of Innovative Schools, or one of 93 schools in the nation. And this is for the most innovative school districts in the nation. Very competitive process to get in. And uh, there's more school district. And we're very proud of that. And I think a lot of that achievement, uh, that vision, and the things that I'm bragging about uh, is the reason why we were admitted. Last uh, February, I got a call from the Department of Education. And they said, uh, they said what's going on over Moore School District? And I, uh, of course, was concerned at first. I said, what do you mean, what's going on? They said, well, the, the growth has been tremendous. What are you guys doing? And I said, why don't you come find out? And so they sent a team from the Department of Education up to Freelinghuisen. And we had a number of conversations spent, three or four hours with them, showing all the different things we're doing to get those results that I showed you. And then a couple months later, the Commissioner of Education came up and visited uh, the school district in, over at Freelinghuisen. Just, just uh, to finish up, uh, it's because of a lot of things, but tremendous partnerships. The MEF. Uh, it's just an incredible educational foundation. The partnerships we have with the towns and our parents, it's, it's all these partnerships that are really critical for the success that we're seeing. And that's what we have to do. And it's, it's part of why I'm here tonight, is just to kind of show everybody, again, uh, some of the successes and things that we're working on. We're not slowing down, full speed ahead. And uh, so I just wanted to update you to, to a lot of good things. And I'll finish with, uh, we're really poised. We feel like taking uh, additional next steps as of April of next this year uh, will be debt free. And not many superintendents can say that either, that we're operating in an environment where we don't have any debt. So we're really excited on a number of different fronts. Thank you very much, everybody. front and it's not like we're relying totally on police for safety or it's there's a very strong climate and curriculum base to support the kinds of things that are really needed in working in school and I, I that really stood out to me and I appreciate that. We um we're we're working on this on all fronts and uh I could go a couple hours if you want, Mayor. Uh, just on the social emotional piece, it, and we've we've built in systems, early identification. Really, we've uh, redesigned our counseling program. We have uh, just a, a dozen different things. Again, at that one slide, you know, where kids were saying, "I can't do it," to "I can do it." That is what we are obsessing over. And how do we get to that? How do we get those kids to move up? There's 50 things that you need to do well. I won't go through all 50. But there's 50 things, right? Or or more, or a few less. But we're working on that social emotional piece. That's great. And that, I think, is a big reason for some of those results. It is. Thank you. 
Uh, just a question. Um, obviously, nationwide, there's been lots of talk about bullying in the schools. Yep. What have you and your staff done to uh, ameliorate that? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's again, 50 uh, different things from redesigning our counseling program, really making sure we have really defined HIP protocols when, when something takes place that we, that we learn about from one way or the other that we're kind of really swooping in with counselors. Our goal is that we really, first of all, we want uh, to reduce recidivism of any HIP. We really use the HIP laws and rules that are there. I know a lot of people feel like it's onerous um, and it's it puts schools in a really difficult mind. I don't approach it that way at all. I think it's a great tool for us to work with students, identify problems, and then swoop in and address those problems in whatever is required uh, to help students. It really is, is critical that one of the things we're working on in terms of social emotional is social awareness. Uh, with students, so we have a whole bunch of strategies. We have, uh, again, redesigned our counseling program. We have counselors pushing in our middle school, especially talking about a lot of these issues. We've put a ton, and we will continue to put a ton more attention on, you know, so much of this is happening with the social media. We've been really focusing, to your question, on um, the issues that are coming about because of social media. Of course, we're seeing that with adults and kids, but the kids are really, um, in my opinion, uh, they're, they're not prepared. Their, their brains aren't fully developed to really, at, we see kids now, right, with phones, third, third grade, fourth grade, but it's not just the phones, that's one thing, but social media, which is different than the technology, because I don't want to say, right, all technology's bad, we don't believe that at all, uh, but the social media piece we're really working on um, to try to work with the kids and families. Thank you very much, sir. Anybody else for your day? Have a question or just, what? Just a thank you. What was Anybody from the public? Harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Anybody from the public care of here? Um, I have a question. Do I need to approach the mic or can I can I just pass it from here? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, regarding the uh, the special class officers that we saw this morning earlier tonight, I know that they're there for protection and safety. And that. Is there any thought to using them, integrating them at all into? educational or curriculum use. I mean, obviously the kids are going to be welcomed by the kids in the school. They're going to be part of the community. Any thought on at the lower grades or to use, obviously, different schools, you could use them differently, whether it's careers in law enforcement at the high school, or is there any room for them to be utilized in any way other than just as sort of a security capacity? So we have SROs at Freeling Highs and Middle School and at the high school, and they're, they're used in a in a different capacity where they're teaching perhaps um, drug and alcohol and some other things. Right now the class threes, you know, our, our primary focus at the moment is safety, security. That being said, there's a lot of soft uh, education taking place there where we want to make sure that uh, we are really developing in our kids a, a healthy relationship and respect for our police force. Um, that's really critical today. I, I don't want to um, just dis, you know dismiss that at all because we we we're in an era where there's not a tremendous amount of trust in our public institutions, whether that's our town councils, our police, our schools, and we really have to continue to to build trust. But in terms of them actually going in and educating uh, in a classroom, no, not yet. But there's a lot of. Uh, hey, what's that badge mean, you know, the kids, and that we're really right now focused on the safety of those schools, developing positive relationships with the faculty and the children and the families. So, the, I mean, I could be wrong with the way I'm imagining that they're going to be there, so they're not just going to be sitting by the front door, but walking the grounds around. Absolutely. So they're going to be, obviously, like I said, part of the community. Absolutely. And finding a way to, I guess, explain that to the kids and yes. socializing that with them would be... Yes, it's a very good comments. I appreciate that. And then I always try to tell people, you know, when we talk about police, we most of us jump to the worst case scenario. But there, there are dozens and dozens of other reasons why you want um, police in our elementary schools that really just have one administrator there. And so there, there's just a, there's a lot of reasons um, that provide safety. Yes, ma'am. Along those lines, are the, regarding these the special officers, 
um, will there be, will, when they start to in the school year, will they be introduced to the student body? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that there's we develop trusting, good relationships with, between our, our children and the police. They don't fear them. That they, uh, I, I, I kind of tell the, the story uh, warmly. of One of the uh, gentlemen up here, I won't say, but he was standing out in front of the school like this, you know, and he looked pretty imposing. And then uh, a little seven-year-old uh, walked by and he stuck his hand up high five and the kid jumped up and slapped him high five. So we're, we're really trying to make sure that there's really strong, good, respectful relationships. Um, and we wanted, that certainly that's part of our education is to make sure that there are good relationships. Okay. Anybody else care to be heard? If not, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Prendergast, for coming out and being with us. I'd like to also thank uh, our Chief DiCarlo and uh, former Captain Tarun and Tim Quinn for putting this whole program together. Very, very worthwhile. And we're, we're all, and I can speak for teachers and administrators, I believe I can speak for the parents too, is everybody just very, very grateful. Thank you so much, sir.